bumblebees have a particular problem. In any given area, there's only a limited number of holes that are suitable for nests. European honeybees, which in the wild nest in holes in trees, have similar difficulty. But some bees have adopted a very radical solution, a very brave solution to that difficulty. They nest out in the open, but at the top of tall trees, sometimes very tall trees. These are the giant Asiatic bees, the biggest of all honeybees. They're found from the Himalayas all the way down to Southeast Asia. These colonies are in Malaysia. They defend themselves with stings, very, very powerful stings, which is why I have to wear a bee suit. And it's not just against one bee that you have to guard yourself. Because if one bee attacks you, it releases a pheromone, a chemical signal which is detected by the others in the comb, and within seconds there will be hundreds, indeed probably thousands of them, all around you, launching a mass attack and stinging you. And some of those stings can actually go through a bee suit. So, something to be avoided. Stinging is a very expensive form of defence because when a bee loses its sting, it dies. So it's better for the colony to warn predators off before they have to fight them off. And they warn them with some dramatic displays. I've got a, a reproduction of a hornet, which is one of the main enemies of bees. I'll see if I can get them to do it. Just watch. There. See, there's a moving wave which passes over the surface of the colony. And that not only produces an impressive pattern, but it also makes it very difficult for any uh, aggressor, like perhaps a hornet, which eats bees, to actually land on that moving carpet of wings. The colony's great treasure, of course, is its huge store of honey. This is produced from nectar, which the bees industriously collect from flowers. They systematically expose it to the air so that the water it contains evaporates and the nectar becomes sweeter and thicker. Eventually, it turns into honey. The combs in which they store it are continuously guarded by the covering of bees. They cling so thickly that it might seem that nothing could get past them. But some thieves know how to do so, particularly at night. A death's head hawk moth flies over the surface of the colony and goes so close to it that the bees are alarmed enough to wave their warning. But the moth is not put off. It wants honey. Amazingly, it manages to land on the carpet of bees and quickly pushes its way through them. A quick sip of honey and it's off. It succeeds because, although it looks nothing like a bee to our eyes, it has camouflaged itself with a smell, a pheromone, that convinces the bees that it's one of them. But in spite of such raids, bees, thanks to their stings, retain their precious honey. Precious because it is that that enables them to survive a season without flowers. <laughs> 